GoPro Hero 11 and 12 action cam review from a motorbike riding perspective. There were only minor tweaks to the GoPro 12, which I feel won't benefit most riders. There's a Max Lens Mod 2 available for an incredibly wide 177 degrees field of view, which would be overkill for helmet cam footage. A time code sync lets you synchronize multiple GoPro 12s, something professionals could find handy. There's a wider range of software, mobile and desktop editing apps. GoPro claims double the running time due to a new power management system, which could be useful for some riders, but there's no independent verification of this claim as yet. And finally, if you are an Apple nerd, there's wireless support for Apple AirPods and other Bluetooth devices. In Australia, the GoPro 12 costs $70 more if any of these features are of interest. Okay, let's focus on the common features of the GoPro 11 and 12. I had no plans to review this model as I was extremely happy with the GoPro 10, but it was stolen on my trip to Vietnam. Dull. For the past few years, the GoPro has simply been the best action cam available. But of course, it was also the most expensive. So you needed to weigh up all the features and see if it suited your purposes. The extremely capable GoPro 10 is still available at discounted prices. See our review for more info. So the main changes from the previous Hero 10 a bigger sensor that also has a new 8.7 aspect, which allows you to edit either landscape or portrait aspects easily from the same footage. There has been a jump from 8-bit to 10-bit colour. If you just use default settings, you may not see any difference. But if you're into post-production adjustments, you can see the slightly improved image quality. The biggest change from a motorbike riding perspective, Hyperview. GoPro users will be familiar with Superview. It's been around for a few years. It's awesome for helmet cam footage as it has a very wide vertical view and gets your handlebars in the shot for a much more immersive experience. It balances everything by compressing the edges of your shot horizontally. The new Hyperview mode takes this one step further and uses the entire sensor for even better quality. And the image stabilization has improved yet again with the new HyperSmooth 5. And you can also choose Horizon Lock, which was previously only available if you purchased the Max Lens mod. Apparently, the larger sensor has made this possible. The Enduro battery now comes standard with the GoPro 11. It definitely lasts quite a bit longer. GoPro also claims it charges faster, but I haven't tested that yet. There are also new night effects available, something I won't be using for filming motorbikes, of course. Problems? Well, my main criticism of earlier models was the GoPro would freeze at least once or twice on rides. I'd have to reset the camera. It stopped with the 10 model. The good news is this GoPro 11 has been problem free as well. The only thing I still don't like is the side door is difficult to open. For years, these doors were easy to open, but over the past three or so years, I've found I need something like a screwdriver to apply enough force to open the door. A small but frustrating issue. Should you buy the GoPro 11? If money is no object, yes. If you are serious about the best possible footage, yes. But if you are on a budget or you don't need the latest and greatest, I suggest looking at the GoPro 10 and potentially save between $100 and $200. Also, if you don't need all the features, GoPro also now has the Mini, which is smaller, lighter and cheaper. How does the GoPro 11 compare to its main competitor, the DJI Osmo Action 4? In recent years, quite a few GoPro users swapped over to the DJI Osmo. It was cheaper, the battery lasted a lot longer, and while it didn't match the GoPro in some respects, it was great for your average rider. But the DJI Osmo is now at a similar price to the GoPro. And the GoPro has the better battery life, which is now close to the DJI. Perhaps the main benefit of the DJI is better performance in low light conditions. But I feel if the prices are so similar, 
The GoPro definitely has the edge with higher resolution and a bunch of other features. Do your research, see what you think. What sort of action cams have you used? Any favourites? <laughs> Any horror stories? Let us know in the comments.